My name is Rosanna. Uh, I'm a freelance producer and I work on different projects, mostly festivals, to um, make sure they happen, bring everyone together, plan the budgets, plan timetables, timelines, um, and bring the whole team together. My name is Meg Fenn and I'm a creative designer and marketer. I'm currently self-employed and my job involves helping people to stay creative and I do this through web and graphic design, marketing, workshop design and delivery and business and community engagement. Hello, my name is Beth Byrne and I recently took over as CEO of Shoreditch Town Hall in East London. Um, our venue is a beautiful old building uh, in the borough of Hackney with eight exciting and very different performance spaces, um, which we fill with a variety of cultural and commercial events, uh, such as theatre, circus, gigs, brand launches, um, fashion label sample sales, um, tea dances, uh, rehearsals and workshops. My role um, ensures that the venue remains viable financially, um, which has been made more difficult um, in these times of COVID, um, especially as we don't receive any public funding. Um, and to ensure that we remain true to our charitable purpose of providing a welcoming home to the many different cultural communities uh, that we house locally um, and for the wider creative community. I work with a small but brilliant uh, senior management team, um, all of whom bring to bear their own expertise in their own areas. And a big part of my role is to look out for them and our wider staff, um, especially during these uncertain times. Hi, uh, my name is Divya Kasturi and um, I am a creative woman working in the fields of dance, choreography, performance, live stage, uh, workshop, technology integrated uh, interdisciplinary projects. I wouldn't want to call what I do as a job because it isn't a job. It's more born out of a very strong passion of having um, been brought up in, in a culture of um, um, arts and practice being part of my everyday life. So um, yes, it's more like a life's practice rather than um, calling it a job. I work, uh, and I, I mean, I work in a range of settings from community to mainstream professional venues to schools, conservatoires, and um, universities, colleges, etc. Um, yeah, that's my kind of uh, practice. My name's Rachel Maloney, I'm an artist and I also work part-time as a technical demonstrator in photography at the University of Brighton. So my role as a technical demonstrator is quite varied, but primarily um, the job involves supporting students in developing their photographic work and their practice. So we support students in their technical skills, in teaching them how to use um, black and white dark rooms, lots of different analogue photography processes, and we also support them in using cameras and equipment and photographic studios and all the skills they need to be able to make their photographic work so that the practice based teaching is, is primarily what our jobs involve. My name is Adriana Lord and I'm a Brighton based artist, singer, writer and theatre performer as well as a workshop leader. I'm lead singer and co-founder of the Brighton-based Afro-Cuban band Song Guarachando. I am also a co-founder of Banyan Tree Theatre Group, an all-black female Brighton-based arts collective. We bring stories rooted in our multiculturally diverse backgrounds to a wider, younger audience and their families here in the city. And we have held performances in festivals, workshops, in schools and theatre venues across Brighton and Hove. Hi, my name is Flo Ambrose and I'm the Performance Programming and Faculty Manager at the Royal College of Music. My job involves looking after a lot of the forward planning at the college. This includes concerts, the use of our performance spaces, masterclasses. I look after the orchestral team, the chamber music team and the faculties team, as well as uh, the programmes and the instruments. I'm Ruth Hardy, I'm the Head of Public Programming at Southbank Centre in London and that means that I lead a team of people of brilliant creative producers and programmers 
who look after all of our public um, multi-art form festivals and seasons. So it's a mix of creative producing, a mix of programming. What has your career path looked like so far? I was born in Havana, Cuba, in a very creatively rich environment. So I have been performing since I was four. Uh, but I always had a love for science and medicine, so I went to medical school. Once at university, I performed and directed theatre plays. I was always involved in organising events, choirs, music productions. So I ended up going to music school to study classical singing and events production. Later, I performed and recorded alongside renowned Cuban musicians. I worked with various mainstream and on the ground music projects uh, and created my first solo project and directed my first solo concert. Additionally, I have done many recording sessions, including commercials, voiceovers for films, publications like The Guardian, and I have performed in tour films, radio, TV shows. With the band Som Guarachando, I was in the cover of the printed version of Mas Reino Unido, a London Latin magazine, and our music has been featured in BBC One, BBC Four shows, and we have performed for jazz clubs like Ronnie Scott's and festivals such as Love Supreme Jazz Festival. And I have also led singing workshops all over the country for young people and adults and coordinated a legacy music project. My career path so far has been... <laughs> well, I started off working as a web designer for an internet company and then went freelance when my children were uh, babies. And since then, I've been a company director twice. And now I work on long-term contracts with various organizations. And I'm at that stage now where I can share my knowledge and experience to help others who are at the start of their careers in the creative or digital sector. So in addition to the hands-on web graphic design and marketing work, I also do a lot of mentoring and workshop leading. I think I've had a fairly traditional career path. I did university, I studied music at York, um, and I went then on from there to work for Cambridge University to set up a new outreach charity. And then I joined more formal sort of arts organisations the arts sector, I guess, and the creative industries um, about nine years ago in London and have been at South Bank Centre ever since. Um, I've always worked in outreach. I've always worked in access. I've really cared about um, people's access to arts and what, what we're providing as public sector organisations for people to access the arts. So that's my background. And um, that developed into a love of festivals and bringing people to art who maybe didn't necessarily think it was for them or know how to engage. So I specialise particularly in public space work. So anything that happens in an area that you don't have to um, buy a ticket and go in, something that's much more democratic um, and often co-curated. For me, um, I think my career path potentially been quite varied and slightly unusual. But after, after graduating as a photography student myself in 2008, um, I then worked as a um, medical photographer for many years. So working for the NHS, working in hospital settings, and the job was very clinical and um, very different to that kind of creative art practice that I was used to. So I then decided to move to Brighton to do the MA in photography here at the University of Brighton. And from there, I got a job as a technical demonstrator. And I also have worked on various art projects and exhibitions myself as an artist. And I've worked um, for the University of Sussex on projects based at the Keep in their archives, primarily to do with digitization and documenting the collections there via photography. So always photography, often working with people, but quite different job roles. I think it sort of involves a lot of crests and a traps and also includes a lot of uh, straight lines, uh, which means um, faces or periods of actually not knowing what to do or 
you know how to go further forwards um so i'm born brought up in india i moved to the uk in 2006 um um i sort of gave up a very a glamorous uh, active career in television industry back home um, but I did, however, have a lot of performance experience back home uh, before I came in here. Um, I did my electronics and communications engineering, but I really wanted to have a degree in the field of work that I was sort of operating in, which made me sign up to do the master's at Roehampton University. And I ended up doing or creating the first virtual master's dissertation in South Asian dance practice as research. Simultaneously was also, uh, um, uh, I auditioned for complicity and I got through um, for their production, a disappearing number. And I was with complicity touring um, all over the globe for nearly three odd years. And that really changed my perspective of what creativity or collaborative creation um, of, of, of performance can actually be um, conceptualized. Um, yeah, ever since it's really shifted and been an eye opener for me into, I mean, all the learnings that I took over from there has, has seeped in consciously, subconsciously into everything that I do today. I've been at the college for almost 15 years now. I had no idea I would stay so long. Before that, I worked at the orchestral team at the Royal Northern College of Music for four years. I've been very lucky in that my job has continued to evolve every few years, so it's kept me interested in the role. I landed in festivals kind of by accident. I started off doing a lot of volunteering in um, different creative industries. I worked as an orchestral management intern for a little bit. And then I did a master's in creative producing and as part of that I had to do a placement and through that ended up working on a festival and realised I really loved it. Um, so I've, I have been doing that ever since. My career to date has been largely based in theatre. Um, I've been really fortunate enough to be at venues during some really exciting times for them, um, such as being at the Donmar Warehouse when Sam Mendes launched his film career and brought some phenomenal um, actors to come and work with us there, um, or being at the National uh, when we transferred War Horse into the West End, um, or at Southbank Centre for the reopening of the uh, Hayward Gallery, QEH and Purcell rooms. It hasn't always been smooth sailing, uh, I've been made redundant twice uh, and I felt like I had to overcome scepticism when returning to work, having had children in the days when flexible working was less accepted. Uh, but I recognise the privileges that have helped me to get some great positions and I've always committed fully um, and worked hard to prove myself in every role and to keep learning. What achievement are you most proud of in your career? I think... I think, yes, I'm really proud of having worked with some of the brilliant uh, creative minds, um, but also I'm really happy about having been able to empower young people. So I teach a lot of young people, f age ranging four and a half upwards to adults. Um, the sense of empowerment that I'm able to show them by making them be more creative and um, opening up their creative uh, intuitions almost, and to see them grow uh, in their respective um, artistic practices um, is something that I really feel proud of having been able to share and empower. For me, the proudest moment in my career so far was when I was awarded a research fellowship in 2019 and the research fellowship was in partnership with the University of Brighton and with the V&A Museum uh, Research Institute. So I was actually based at the V&A uh, one day a week, working with their photography collections. So I got to work with the archives and I was working to um, develop a project called the Matri Archives that I'd proposed. And that project was about the marginalised narratives of women and I got to also work with um, research participants and incorporate the voices of other women and women that had maybe been overlooked in photographic collections in the past. So that was 
a, a really kind of proud and, and special project for me. I'm most proud of all of the people I've worked with. I've had some fantastic people in my team and it's been brilliant to see them develop and move on to make the next steps in their career. Musically, I'm most proud of the concerts that we've put on with Bernard Heiting. The students performed incredibly for him. My career, sometimes I think it's quite hard to say what you're proud of. I think I'm most proud of the way I got my team through lockdown, actually, and I'm sure lots of people are going to have similar feelings now, but I don't think in the creative industries care and careful staff is necessarily high enough on people's agenda. And I'm really proud of how I managed to hold a team together at a time that was very, very difficult for all of the art sector and all of the creative industries with so much uncertainty, but to do it with care and respect for what each individual was going through. Um, and we got the other side of lockdowns and created amazing work online, including the first entirely online unlimited festival, which I'm hugely proud of. And it wasn't a single effort at all. It's a huge team that puts work like that together, but I'm proud that we didn't give up and we kept pushing, even though we were still closed and we couldn't have people in our buildings. I'm really proud that we worked together and we all got through creating Unlimited Online. That question's a really hard one because I think I've done a lot of big projects that I'm really proud of. Um, and yeah, a lot of like spectacular shows that I think objectively are pretty incredible things to have pulled off. Um, I think the thing I'm most proud of though is the work that I've done most recently with emerging, emerging artists and uh, emerging producers, um, giving them the tools to learn and to advance in the industry and just, um, yeah, lending my support to help people thrive. I could name lots of exciting uh, performances that I've been uh, lucky enough to work on um, or brilliant people that I've been lucky enough to work with. Uh, but I think my greatest achievement was to see through um, the department redundancies uh, during really difficult times in COVID um, to enable uh, all of the people who worked with me to keep their roles um, and then to find the strength to move on and take on a challenging new leadership position myself. Um, I also truly believe that our greatest achievements are the ones that are waiting for us around the corner. So I hope that mine is yet to come. To be able to be myself on stage. Another achievement is uh, I have made a career here in the UK by singing in my language and by making Afro-Cuban, Afro-Caribbean culture visible. I have met women that have shaped the industry when the industry did not have a box for them. I am proud of performing at the first official LGBTQ Pride event in Cuba with Spontaneous Theatre of Havana, which received a UNESCO award for the work in spreading awareness and educating about people living with HIV AIDS. And I can now say I have recorded and performed with artists and writers that I have always looked up to. And for me, working as a creative, and a service provider is all about the people. The people I work with, the people I work for, the people I collaborate with, and the people I mentor, also the people that I learn from, and the people that I just come into contact with, um, you know, whether that's uh, in a workshop or at a conference, for example. So I am most proud of the way I show up and consistently bring my A game and the way I prioritize people over profit and the relationships that uh, I've had um, and that I've built over the years. And this means that I have a sustainable and really, really enjoyable uh, business and work life. What advice or words of wisdom do you have for other women looking to pursue or develop their careers in the creative industries? Believe in yourself and know that you are not alone. Collaborate with like-minded artists and look at how they walk the path that you want to pursue. And keep working, keep working, keep working. Do not feel bad when you need to rest 
and collect yourself because resting is also part of keeping yourself sane and healthy even though the most visible artists seem to have made it overnight that you don't know what they have been through and finally remember that it's a beautiful thing to look back and see what you have overcome external and internal obstacles and the things you have learned and the experience that you have had and that you know that you will continue to gather and the unique sensation that is seeing your work out there. Oh, advice. Um, I think someone told me once that it's always better to regret the things you do than the things you don't do. And I truly believe that. There's lots of times in my life I've been worried I'd fail, so didn't even want to try. And I think the creative industries as a sector can feel like that. So I'd probably say you are good enough as you are and don't let anyone trick you into not trying something that you want to do or make you believe that you're not good enough to do what you want to do. Give it a go. And if it goes wrong, give it a go again. Um, and I also think it's good to remember that everyone feels like an imposter. I know we talk about imposter syndrome a lot, but every single one of us feels like we don't belong. And you just have to push that voice out of your head and remember that you know what you're doing and you can do this. So my advice is to hone your creative skills and work hard on your USP, your unique selling point. Never stop learning because that is how you will stay creative and prioritize people. That will help you to find your tribe, which is really important for support and friendship and learning, and also for opening up opportunities for you to grow as a creative and to develop your career. My main advice would be go for it. It isn't easy juggling the long hours required in the music industry, particularly with concerts in the evening and rehearsals the next morning. Um, I'm very lucky to be part-time and I think the one thing that the pandemic has showed us or one of the things the pandemic has showed us is it's improved our ability to be more flexible uh, with working from home, with a rotor system on who's in the office. Um, it's improved the balance between a work and home life. It's not easy but we now know it can be done. The best advice I can give, um, which I would give to my younger self if I could, would be to to not worry so much about what other people expect of you or what other people think you should do and just keep being creative, keep doing the things that you love, follow the things that you're passionate about and don't worry about people telling you you can't do this or you can't do that. Um, I had lots of people say I wasn't arty enough or I wasn't academic enough to, to go and study photography at university or to do photography based jobs, but I did them anyway. And I think just, just really enjoying the process of what you do and not worrying about where you're at at a certain point or comparing yourself to other people and just really enjoying the creative aspect of your of your career and your life and your practice. If you're working backstage or like uh, uh, behind the scenes, try not to hide away all the time, <laughs> which I do all the time, but I think you should um, celebrate when you do have an achievement and take your credit when credit's due. Um, and I think the other thing is don't, um, try not to buy into the, uh, the, uh, try not to buy into the, um, like 17 hour work day. Obviously sometimes you have to do that because you're working on events, you're working on projects, but I think you need to take care of yourself and you need to make sure that you're taking breaks and, um, yeah, looking after yourself and looking after other people in your team. Allyship and solidarity. Uh, my advice is to look out for and support each other. Um, your kindness and generosity to others may well be your most important legacy. And work out your personal values, what fills you with joy, and find homes that share them and welcome them in you. Only you can gauge what will enable you to feel most fulfilled. Oh, and rewrite your CV often um, so as to reflect on what you've achieved um, and take a moment to feel proud. Words of wisdom. Um, I don't think I'm quite there yet. I'm still sort of um, learning. But um, 
a big thing that I have sort of taken away from having worked with, um, you know, brilliant people is it's okay to not to know. Um, and also not to judge people, uh, to really give them their time and space to open up, to uh, be more creative, um, especially if you're wanting them to give you creative uh, outputs. It's important to not judge them. And finally, something that I've really learned um, or imbibed um, last few in the recent past is about uh, persevering um, without any sense of uh, goal or an ambition in mind to really persevere and delve deeper into what you do, which automatically then paves way for uh, unexpected um, goals and achievements that will really blow your mind away.